We're going to use the lasso and bucket tool and do a black and white painting, starting with just three values. And then we are going to expand our value range and colorize. We'll kind of try to do a full painting. Um, so what you've noticed is I've got a couple of references. And I was thinking kind of like creepy dark path in the woods um, as, as a good subject. And even though it's daytime. And I've got two references. I like this vertical one because of the way the trees hang over. And I like the horizontal one because I would rather do a horizontal image. And I, but I like these rocks and the idea of like of rocks hanging over and going through a pathway that has uh, rocks on either side. Could be pretty interesting. Um, the composition of both photos isn't really ideal. I don't mind the path being centered or just slightly off center. But... Um, you know we can we can work with it and so what we're going to do is work with shape this whole time cool so now i get a basically one to 1.9 um, canvas which is exactly what i want all right i like to keep a little bit of a binding box around sometimes i'll turn off the rulers so we get a clean working canvas and since we're going to be working on composition i like to work small first and then add as we get to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a naming our layers and making three layers. Okay, so I'm going to put a background layer, call it BG. I'm going to have a middle ground layer and a foreground layer. Now I've started with a very, a relatively small canvas, 4,000 by 2,100 is not big. Finishing to, for like professional purposes, you would want to do like at least 10,000 pixels in, in the widest dimension. Um, probably larger if you're going to go to print. Um, you know, a good print is like 300 dots per inch. So you calculate the size, you're going to print it. Um, times 300 per inch and that gives you your pixel size if you're going to get a great print sometimes it has to be 600 dpi you multiply it by 600 there are printers even that go to like 1200 dpi so it really depends on on the, the end goal you have in mind um, you know plan like right now everything's in 4k but 8k is going to come eventually so plan on that so any you know anything like that's 4k right now in five ten years is going to look um, like low res basically so now lasso tool what we do with the lasso tool is free lasso or or like the um or the or the polygon lasso is going to work right um you know if it's polygon lasso you just make your your shapes close the shapes bucket fill the shapes that's all fine and dandy i'm going to use the free lasso because it's like um a little quicker so what I'm kind of thinking is um, we start with the background that'll be the sky we want it to be at night so what I can do is just go around the top edge and we have a horizon we'll probably be looking at a fair amount of ground so the high horizon will be high so we can just go ahead and take our um, dark value I drop that whoops I drop that dark value and put it here. This dark value is, you'll notice, a like 90% on the value scale, like um, or like 10% on this black slider. It is not full black because if we want to colorize it, we need to be away from the absolute black because if you colorize something that's 100% black, the color doesn't show up. Same thing with that white over there. That is a 10% like white. Um, and we're going to want to um, basically put color on that so it can't be 100%. The gray is the exact 50%, and if we want to get it, we can just type it in here, 50, um, right smack in the middle. I think it's a good way to, to sort of begin. We can modify it from there because we're going to be working in flat shapes for a while. We'll change the edge quality too. Okay, so in the middle ground, um, we have 
rocks and we want we want a pathway here but I think we should have some rocks like here right um, and so what I do is I use the hotkeys and I just flip between the bucket and the lasso each time I want to have a shape and here I, I just want to create some interesting rock shapes and they're all gonna bleed into each other right um, I'm going to use the, the reference as the basis, you know. And I, but I want to exaggerate these shapes. I want to push them. You know, so I have small rocks here, which are, which are good. And I need, um, I need small rocks uh, in the foreground and middle ground. Um, if I put a big rock, um, if, I, if I take this rock that we have here and really exaggerate it, and make it like huge that is blocking off a large section of the composition and that's not really good right we want to be able to see back in space so the idea is big objects back um, so they take up smaller areas but we can definitely uh, get some rocks going over here You can see how they're kind of like overlapping each other. And there's, no, there's no difference in the rocks right now. And that's okay as far as I'm concerned. All right. Um, but right here, there's this big rock, which I kind of like. Um, but I want it to be a little bit bigger and come up like that and be a little more like Sinister feeling, I guess. And I want to like, I want it to hang over, you know, and be a little bit um, triangular, like it's evil or something. probably want a couple more rocks over here so it looks like I'm going in into like a rocky area and I probably want a couple little rocks like there because um, I'm planning on this pathway kind of coming out in this area um, And then in the middle ground, there's also going to be some trees. Like, I like this tree that's right here, you know, coming up. I can kind of, like, throw out some, like, some crazy branches. And what I may have to do here is just, like, put a... Put a, a bad sort of shape there and uh, like come back in with the eraser tool here and like cut into this tree make sure it gets like thin enough and so it's like crazy jagged so this is the kind of back and forth that we can do is we can lasso bucket and then erase um, into that shape to get some interesting rock shapes um, and this shape's kind of boring so we can work on just shape quality right I like this shape here but I want to push that overlap down push that back here so I can get like another rock shape there On these work on these shapes um, I like the idea that there'd be like some bushes or something back here coming up above these particular shapes that you use for this should be kind of like 
unique to you and you kind of just figure out what shapes are going to work and create the, the mood or atmosphere that you want, right? Um, that shape's going to be too blobby. And I'm literally just kind of scribbling these shapes out. Um, they don't have to be anything super special. Um, just that they're jagged and small, I think, is all that I really need to worry about. And maybe I'll do that and improve this tree a little bit. So sometimes when you're working for like a texture, that wasn't a good one. No, it's just like about figuring out a loose way to make marks that is going to help you. So now I just work through the middle ground. There's still going to be some trees here. might need to actually put some like ground down here. And I can use like little random shapes to kind of describe the ground plane a little bit. And then I can fill them back with um, like a slightly different value because what we're going to do is we're going to start with three values and expand the value range and bring this idea back to some overlapping rocks there. That's more interesting. And uh, when I create a lassoed area, um, I can, I can uh, fill it really easily. Um, I can also, when I create this selection, I can just move it a little bit if it's not in the right spot. You can also use the brush tool for this, um, which is, which is uh, just as viable. You know, the trick is to just work flat. But I like this lasso bucket method because it is so like, it forces you into a hard edge and it forces you to work flat, and I have, um, you know, I have trouble kind of doing that sometimes. Cool. I have interesting shapes in the middle ground now, and I probably should do a couple of like shapes like this to kind of create, um, and then probably want to create like a shape here. kind of suggest that there's something like going back here. Jagged and triangular. So if this is creepy, I just use triangles, right? Because that's like the encoded um, uh, sort of semi cheesy language of like uh, entertainment design that, you know, Triangles suggest discomfort because they're sharp like teeth. Um, it's not a very sophisticated way to go about things, but um, you know, make use of the actual technique, right? Actually, I'm gonna ID. I just deleted layers. Whoops. We're at 90, enter. Okay, cool. So now um, I get my selection out. Now I can work on things like this pathway that's coming out because I'm going into the foreground, right? And I think having a pathway that's kind of like comes down like this, um, I want it to be kind of big in the front and then just get smaller as it goes back until it's here. And um, I need that in the foreground layer. My bucket fill that, right? 
it's very um, indistinct from the background. So what I could do for the background, to just to be sure that I have um, covered everything, is I could uh, create another layer. And uh, so I could fill that layer just to be sure with the color, just to be sure that I've um, covered everything over. Go back to my color and then continue working in the foreground, right? Now here, I probably want some like, you know, uh, little mini rocks and things in the foreground. Um, rocks on the edges of pathways tend to be uh, pretty good things to do. There's also like, you know, the pathway on this uh, vertical image kind of goes up here. And so I could create like little lines that suggest that things go up. And then I also want my overhanging trees in the foreground that kind of create those creepy shapes. So, you know, up here, I need that tree that comes up, you know, and hangs over everything. And has like little doodads coming off of it. So you can see now that we're building outward to something like better, right? You know, that shape is too like large in there. Um, sometimes I can go in and actually just delete, use the lasso and delete. That's another way instead of like getting in there with the eraser to actually like make some good changes. Um, you know, now I have that tree hanging over. That kind of establishes some stuff. Um, I want to I want to get some things going down here. Some like just some shapes here to kind of lead me out of the gloom and doom of dying in a corner. That's a big um, compositional thing to worry about. It's just like you know how do I get you out of that corner, compositionally speaking. Now here I've got some trees that make cool S curves. And I can actually do those that kind of go back and hang over the pathway. Um, that's probably going to have to get bigger so you can even see it. I can mix and match trees. Like I've got, so I've picked, pulled some trees here, right? Then I can, there's a cool tree here that's got sort of a V shape. I just put that in front of another tree, so I want to move it a little. And then I can pull that V shape out. So that's a little more interesting now. Then I can take a tree from over here and work on that, you know, something that goes like all the way up. And I can just focus on, you know, making sure that this tree you know, has the right shapes in it. Um, and I'm flattening the ground out too. That's another difference that's kind of happening. Okay, another thing you probably notice is just like that I haven't filled the whole area yet. Um, so I think what I can do is um, take like, 
you know, the, the shelf of the foreground is going to be like 75. So it'll be the border if, between foreground and middle ground. So what I could do is take like 80 and a bucket on the bucket tool. Lasso out basically like my whole entire foreground um, fairly carefully here. Because I don't want to like, you know, totally screw up what I did in the middle ground. Go around here. I don't want to lose my shapes here. Get my bucket tool, which it's not letting me select because I'm still on that thing. And fill in all these areas. Trying not to hit that. Then deselecting it. So in my foreground now, I've got a, uh, a two tone that two-tone thing. Then what I probably want to do is come back over here where I've got these and I can, if I need to I can quick select um, and make sure I get that uh, 80 around. So I'm making like a little value palette here. Then for the middle ground um, I am at 50 so what I could do is like 60 to 65. Um, so let's do like uh, 60 so this will be a little lighter and I can go into my middle ground um, and select you know, all these blank spaces in the middle ground. And start to bucket fill those. that I cover up these these red areas. Um, those places where I erased, it kind of messed up because the edge wasn't super hard. So that's okay. What I can do then is take that selection, add a layer under the middle ground, bucket fill that area, it fills it up better. Then I can take those two layers, select them, and then I can hit um, uh, layer, merge layers, or control E, and that puts them together. So now I have a more clear, like, uh, middle ground layer. And then for the background layer, um, I'm going to do the same thing, actually, because that was actually really clean. Um, so I want to add a mountain. So background layer is 90%, uh, which is 10, really. So I'll go to 20. Um, Lasso, get my lasso tool out. Um, so I'll go on top of the background layer. And I want to create, like, I like this mountain in the background that I've got on that bottom photo. So um, it would come out maybe like here, dip down. It's not exactly a good spot. I want the peak to kind of be like there. Come back down. Maybe it peaks again there. Get another peak. Um, bucket fill that. It's kind of cool. And like add another peak here or something. Um, then maybe I get like, you know, another one back here and here or something. Oops. I'm going to add to that selection. So I basically added a little more depth, and I and now I've expanded into uh, six tones into my foreground, middle ground, background. So I can select those two layers, um, deselect that selection because I hit, then hit Control E, compress the layers. So now I have a foreground that I can turn on and off, a middle ground I can turn on and off, and a background that I can turn on and off. So one of the things that I could do is say, well. Is that an interesting background in and of itself? Do I like it? Um, and I could say, well, yeah or no. So I could say, well, I don't like this particular bit of the selection. So I could go in and start like cleaning that up some. Um, 
and just like fixing that. Um, I want to be sure maybe that I fill in this area and or this area. So I have a clean background layer. It doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom. Um, and then maybe I want this, the mountains to be like more peaky and more sinister. Um, And, you know, I probably want them to be more nuanced eventually. Then I can go into the middle ground. And now I've got um, you know, a little bit of, of the foreground and middle ground kind of bleeding into each other. Um, I know where my pathway is going to be. It's going to be like right here. Um, so I can think on this middle ground layer, you know, what do I need to do to make the middle ground layer more interesting? Um, you know, I've got this idea that there are rocks here, and then I want um, like areas of the rocks to be like darker, um, so that I get some more sinister shapes. So I go um, expand my value range again to the to the to the darker side of that, and I can start putting in these like. Um, you know, triangular-ish, rocky, um, shadow shapes inside these um, these rocks that I was kind of working on here. Start to make things just more interesting and break this up. them to be like to have a, a consistent sort of shape language but I also want them to be um, descriptive of what they're what they actually are like it should look in the end like there's rocks here even if they are kind of like a little stylized or a little funky um, and it should look like we're gonna go down this this path here um, I can actually go up to uh, up to 60 um, and work on some of these shapes again or even 70 and because I want the path to be a little lighter path to kind of like disappear back here. So I want the foreground and middle ground path to kind of blend right into each other. Um, which it's doing pretty well there. Yeah. Um, there's nothing that says that I can't have um, lighter values in the middle ground or, or background. It's just I want to stick there for a while and make sure that things get um, developed. And I can start using colors, like just dabbing colors off of what I've already established um, if I want to. So I don't have to go all the way over to the palette or manually pick. And just keep working in these shapes. And if I want like big shadowy areas, I can do that too around certain rocks. Maybe, maybe there is like some kind of light source in the dark, like the moon's coming from the top right or something. Um, so I can start putting like shadows on the ground here. Just making things 
things get a little more interesting. Okay, now I need to work into the foreground because um, the foreground is kind of lame. Um, so I have a uh, like dabbing this out. I've got the uh, 90 and the 80. I could go all the way down to um, uh, 75 and I can work into like a 95, but I probably shouldn't go above 95. So if I want something darker, um, the background's working uh, with the lightest value up to like this uh, 60. Or 70 here. Um, so let's do like, let's pick um, 75 manually, get the lasso tool out, and then that will help us um, join the um, pathways here. And then we'll go to 80. Lasso it. Or actually 85. So we want some differentiation here from the background area. And then into the 90, which we've got already. So now we've kind of blended the pathway and it's given it a little more of a jagged edge too. Um, if we need to, we can go all the way light to 100% here. And we can maybe add like a section of the pathway that's light here. Really work into the foreground. Cool. So we can work on our bottom shelf here for the 75 or the 70 here. Let's take it all the way down to 70. Okay, so we have the lasso. Um, we can put like shadows on rocks this way. A two-sided rock is always good, where you basically create like a light side and a dark side. Makes it easier. And then we can add ground shadows too. And then we can add ground and shadows off the trees here as well. And use those to help the ground get interesting. And again, they don't have to be perfect. And for now they can like, um, they can cross trees. And I can bring that back by lassoing, taking the bucket, take that color, fill it. Um, Get another shadow here. And then across that again, so I can just bring that back. So now I'm getting to like the point where it's a little bit reasonable. Then I want a shadow on the side of this path. Like every path kind of needs a side, you know? Otherwise it, it kind of just doesn't really work per se. And so I can work on the shape of this side here. Wait, hold on. That needs to come down to 70. All right, so now I'm getting a little shadow here cast on the side. a little shadow, like sh little shadows we can get here. So the ground kind of like goes up. And then we can also do like little shadow shapes in here. 
for like ground texture and stuff. And then, um, you know, these trees, we didn't really get enough uh, shapes in the trees here. So we just want to work on getting those shapes filled out. And the cool thing about this is just at any given point, if I don't like the shapes that I just did, I can just hit undo, I can make changes, I can draw more carefully if I want. That didn't, I don't, I don't like that. Undo. I don't even like that selection that I made. Okay, now um, I've worked on this like zoomed out a lot. So I can zoom in and see how I'm doing um, a, little bit, a little bit more accurately. I mean, it's kind of getting there. Um, there. I could do a lot more to it, right? Because I'm relying on, there's no foreground stuff on the right. So maybe what I need is another tree on the right and I can pick um, maybe this tree like over right here is interesting because um, it, it kind of has like an interesting curve to it and I can put it like higher up here and it does sort of this thing and I want to be sure that it, it kind of properly like overlaps and stuff I think I needed that shape in there. To kind of help bring us back into it, you know? I needed some overlap. There's a big advantage, you know, to working like this because now every shape is like flat and graphic and um, can pick colors um, in sort of flattened graphic ways now too. I'm gonna be sure not to create like tangents as well. And I can get as hyper detailed here as I want to. Um, now, what I can do, uh, I'm rushing this. I would want to spend a lot more time on this and really refine some of those shapes because a lot of them are pretty like idealized. What I can do is I can add a layer on top, and I can do, um, I can do a color blend mode, and I'll show you what that does. Then I can take a brush, and I can decide on my color scheme. So I could say like. Uncomfortable color schemes are, are Discord, and on the color wheel, they work um, not quite opposite each other. So we know that red and green are complementary colors, so they're harmonious. But like green and violet are, are discordant. So I could say, well, you know, I want to get a violet of middle value, middle saturation. And that violet is going to create um, like a color blend mode. Um, and I can work that over my background layer. Um, and I can get, um, I can basically control to select my background layer so it limits to the background layer. And I can get a brush of any kind with the brush tool. 
Um, and then I can paint over that area. And you'll notice that what's cool about it is that it very much like changes the color, but I still see that shape because, um, you know, and I can actually use full color if I want. Like, let's just say I use full color for the sake of it. I keep the value, but all this does really is just change the saturation of, of that, you know. I could go here, um, and if I pick a light color, you'll notice that it's, it's not light, even though that layer is light. It's because of the blend mode. I could do other blend modes, and you can see what they do. Multiply only gets darker. Um, lighten only gets lighter. Um, and overlay does a slight color thing, very similar to what the color blend mode does. See it? Very similar. So we do a color blend mode over that. So I colorize that layer with a violet, right? Then uh, middle ground, I could use like um, either a different violet or like a green. So I could say, well, you know, I could use a um, cool violet of middle saturation. And um, then I could add a layer over the middle ground, colorize that, right? Select everything in the middle ground, get my brush out again with that color. And then only on the middle ground area, because I've selected that using one of my selection methods, will I colorize that area. And then in the foreground for some discord, because we're going from a, a comfortable green to a um, uncomfortable, like violet kind of thing. I could use like a sicklier yellow green of middle saturation. I could add a layer to the foreground, color blend mode it, and then here, it's all gonna be very, whoops, I didn't select that. And then here, everything's gonna be green, right? I don't change the value. And there we have kind of like a, a cheesy colorized painting. And this can, um, you know, we've disconnected the layers from each other. So what we would want to do then is in the foreground layer, basically um, take our magic wand tool and select, um, maybe select this particular value range here. Um, so we could select a color range, drop that. We can, um, remove the fuzziness all the way down and we're only going to get those dark parts. So what we could do in our layer five, right, since we've selected those, we could then choose our violet again of middle value and saturation, take our brush tool, and then in the foreground, we're going to get a light violet. That's the same violet or a similar one than we used in the back and it's only going to be in the shadow part, right? Um, this, I think, is another potentially interesting way to go about things um, using that. Then ultimately what we're going to do is we would come back on top of here, add another layer and start painting in to, and go to finish because um, this, what we're doing is figuring out how to establish the color range and how to colorize it. And at any moment, if I don't like these, this color, like if I don't like this green and I want to do a violet monochrome, I can just say, well, you know, go to this color layer, boom, lock the transparent pixels, right? So I don't have to keep selecting the foreground. I can go ahead and say, well, I've got a, uh, a, cool, uh, like a cool violet, a true violet, and then I could pick a red violet, um, which will wind up looking pink against those, and that could be my foreground, right? And in fact, I could do that with all of them, and then I could go in and work out ways of unifying this color range because um, it's progressing from light to dark and from warm to cool, right? Um, and from here I can just play and play and play. The other way to think about it is um, with this foreground, right? Um, remember how we did that edge exercise early on? I could find that er my eraser tool 
and my brush and say, well, I want to do a soft edge here along, along this so it blends. So I could take my eraser tool. Let me turn off the color layer. Um, I could say, well, I want a soft blend into this. So I could erase into that. Whoops, I erased the tree. Didn't mean to erase the tree. There, OK. Now, again, turn off color layers. I'm on my foreground. I want to blend my way into the middle ground. I can do that by using a soft brush here. And erasing just a little bit to get into that area. I can see that I've, I can see some of that red under there that I put down at the beginning to show me if I didn't cover something. So what I can do is go back into the middle ground and extend the shape down a little bit. Um, so I could turn the foreground off, go to the middle ground, um, get my lasso tool out, um, actually get my bucket tool out, select this color, fill that whole area so that it's just full. That way I can never really, I don't really have to worry about that. Um, so then I kind of like if I turn these back on, there's going to be a, a little more, a um, little more of a blend potential going on. And then I can go in here, unlock those transparent pixels, get my eraser tool out, and I can blend that edge again in the color. So that I'm getting the color blended properly. Then I can go here and um, get my color selected in brush mode. Oh wait, it's in the foreground here. It's kind of erased too much, right? that area. Yeah. So I can kind of fade and blend that way. Cool. Now let's say that um, working back into this without the color, um, let's say that um, I don't like these trees. Um, that much. What I could do is say, well, I know I want a tree someplace. So I'm going to get bucket fill this. I'm going to add another layer on top. I don't like this particular tree. So what I could do is say, well, I like the trunk okay, but I don't like the tree itself. So what I can do is I can bucket fill a huge area where this tree is going to go. Um, then I can deselect that, get my eraser tool out, and I can pick a brush that would allow me to like, um, erase into it in an interesting way to get um, something very like tree-like or foliage-like. I can work on the outer edge a lot. If this tree had foliage and wasn't just all dead branches, this would be kind of how I might go about it. Because I want to see through a little bit, but I want soft edges, but I would also want to see some of the actual branches. And I'd want to like eliminate most of those hard edge shapes. So I could go about it like that. Potentially interesting way. And then I could blend it down into that layer, right? I could select it into the foreground. Blend it back down, turn the blend mode on, um, uh, or turn this on. You know, I didn't actually, um, 
basically picked that color in the middle set in the middle value. I didn't hit um, all of those areas, right? So I would want to reselect that, hit all that, deselect it, and then I have like that pink tree back. Um, you could, you know, say, well, if I want that tree to be green, I can do that too. Um, by first selecting and then making part of the tree green. Anyway, you can see the power of, of this kind of this kind of method, because what it makes what it what happens is that it, it becomes like endlessly flexible. Um, I probably want to go back really far. If I want to go back really far in the undo, this is another trick. I can go to the history and run myself back pretty far, back to before where I merged layers. Um, right? Because I don't even really like that layer. So I can play around with those edges in that way, you know? Um, I think the longer time you spend in these, in, in this black and white range, the easier it is to do the colorization and finish. Um, and we'll stop there because we're at about an hour and that's a long time for this particular, particular demo. Um, I may work on this off camera a little bit and, uh, and just refine it some and come back in a little bit and uh, you know, work on a little bit more of the finish with it.